Good morning. A peace be upon you. Swelling is a very important presentation of patients in surgery. Patients present in surgery with swellings. This is a series of videos on swelling and today I am going to do part one. And the part one is stepwise approach for diagnosis and treatment of a swelling. Because if one thinks in a stepwise way, according to a logarithm, the way human brain is made, it is easier to reach to a diagnosis and treat a patient and it is an efficient way. Step one is determine clinically the tissue plane in which the swelling is present. So by the end of the clinical examination, one should be sure that in which tissue plane the swelling is present. For example, if you talk about limbs, the swelling could be present in skin, it could be present in subcutaneous tissue, it could be present in muscle, or it could be present in the bone. Step two is think of one or two common swellings arising from this tissue. That will constitute a differential diagnosis. Please do not think a large number of diseases in differential diagnosis. Think the most common one or two swellings, not more than that. By this, you are going to help 98% of the cases. For example, in skin, the common swellings are sebaceous cyst or dermoid. In subcutaneous tissue, the common swelling is lipoma. Once you have done this, then this is important. Match the differential diagnosis with the prototype examples. We know this thing. Each swelling has certain characteristics. And if any swelling has that characteristic, we are pretty sure that's the diagnosis. For example, in skin, sebaceous cyst has a punctum. Now, if we know that the swelling in the tissue plane is the skin, we have thought of these things, then any swelling in the punctum would be a spacious cyst. Similarly, in subcutaneous tissue, lipoma has lobulation and slip sign is present. Any subcutaneous swelling which has lobulation and plus minus slip, slip sign is present, then it has to be lipoma. Then step four is confirm the diagnosis by fine needle aspiration cytology, ultrasound, and x-ray depending upon the tissue plane. For example, in skin, fine needle aspiration cytology is good enough if you want to do. In subcutaneous plane, again, fine needle aspiration cytology is good enough and one can also do an ultrasound guided if one feels like. In muscular tendinous tissue, ultrasound and fine needle aspiration cytology is good enough and if you think it is a bone, then X-ray is possibly a good investigation. Once we have confirmed this thing, then the step five would be treat the swelling and the treatment of swelling is only one that is excision, that is if needed. So either we don't do anything about swelling or we excise it. For example, we are going to excise the swelling if the diagnosis cannot be confirmed, it is benign, either clinically or by investigations. If it is benign, then the swelling should be excised if cosmetically the patient desires, a patient is unhappy to have it. That can become an indication of excision. If it is a malignant swelling, then obviously the treatment will include excision. And if there is a swelling, even if it is benign and it is symptomatic, it is causing pressure effect on the surrounding tissues, then it should be removed. A symptomatic swelling. Let me share with you a case. I still remember his name, Mr. Robert, he was 32 years old when I was working in St. George's Hospital. 
When the patient came to me in OPD and I want to diagnose what this swelling is, first I determined what is the tissue plane. And tissue plane is subcutaneous because I remember I could pinch off the skin of the swelling so it was not present in the skin. When I trotted the muscles and moved the swelling, the swelling movement became more obvious. It means it was not attached to the muscle, otherwise its movement should have become less. And obviously it was mobile, so it couldn't have been from bone. In differential diagnosis, I knew this thing, the common swelling is lipoma. So I thought of lipoma. I knew because of reading books like Norman Browse and other clinical books, there are two characteristic features of lipoma. One is lobulation, other is slip sign. So when I was doing the clinical examination of this patient, I could see the lobulation. It became prominent when I pressed the swelling and slip sign was present. So therefore, it was a lipoma clinically. To confirm it, it is a lipoma. I did ultrasound and fine needle exploration cytology and confirmed it's a lipoma. This lipoma was only 2 to 3 centimeters, I remember. It was not essential to excise it because it was not growing that rapidly. There were no signs of malignancy in it. But patient desired it to be removed. Treatment what it was excision under local anesthesia. If you see this lipoma, even you can see the lobulation in this photograph. I hope this had helped you stepwise approach. In subsequent videos, I am going to talk about history taking in a case of lipoma, then examination in case of lipoma in which I am also going to teach you how to do tests on lipoma properly like translimulation test, like fluctuation test, so on and so forth. And then we are going to do a number of drills so that we can practice these steps or stepwise approach to the diagnosis of a swelling. I hope it helps you. Have a good day.